Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeshin, and I'm the founder of Lloyd. Celine and Nolan, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Good afternoon, Eugene. I'm Nolan. I'm an outreach associate at Lawyer. Uh, hi, I'm Sahini. I'm the business manager at Lawyer. I'm going to head over to Justin to introduce Eugene. Thank you, Sahini. Uh, today we have Eugene Jacobov with us. Based in Canada, Eugene is a senior consultant and managing director with the Canadian Business and Enterprise Services. He also runs a YouTube channel where he explains how to set up businesses in Canada and works as the strategy director for SunSmart UV Systems. In the past, he has also trained lawyers in the military and has worked as a compliance officer, HR department manager, and legal counsel for various organizations. At this point, I recommend you check out Eugene's LinkedIn profile displayed on the screen now to learn more about him. Welcome, Eugene. Thank you for sitting down with us today. Um, today's interview is designed to give aspiring lawyers an insight into who you are and what you do, as well as help them gain some exposure into the practical aspect of uh, practicing law, which involves having discussions about the various positions you've held in the past, and with that, I'll hand it over to my colleagues, Sohini and Nolan, so we can get started. Thank you. I'm going to start it off by asking you a quick and easy question, hopefully, of what inspired you to become a lawyer? Yes, Nolan. Uh, it's actually not a quick and definitely not an easy question to me. Um, I, um, at growing up and, and going through school, never actually planned to be a lawyer. I always uh, liked and I always feel the urge to fight for justice. Uh, I even was expelled from one of the schools I, I, I studied as a result of my fight for justice back in uh, Russia, Soviet Union. Um, but when the decision uh, had to be made, what, what profession I would, uh, I would like to, to pursue, I've chosen law and, and I decided to go to law school uh, because of combination of of multiple factors. Uh, the major of them is literally my, my uh, love of, uh, of the system of justice. Um, I believe that the system uh, is actually probably not, not good, as good as it could be. And um, my, my constant uh, drive to, to provide support and services to people who have very limited access to resources, especially in, in, in legal system very complicated and, and hard to, to digest for, for people who are not part of the system. Oh, that's very powerful. I love that answer. Um, my next question for you was about your law school experience. How would you describe that? Uh, well, again, it's, uh, it's a bit of a um, complicated question because to understand my law school experience you have to realize that I started uh, studying law in uh, the Tel Aviv University in Israel uh, only one year after I arrived to Israel and essentially only after one year after uh, that I started learning Hebrew so my experience was very harsh like I, I, I came at a certain point uh, during my, my studying, I came to a realization that there are certain advanced legal words that I know in Hebrew, and they're very basic words like a cup of coffee or ways that I would, know, would not know how to say in Hebrew. Uh, the first year is the year I want to forget. Um, I literally once sat down and checked, it took me between 30 to 35 minutes to read one page of, of uh, complicated legal text just to understand what it says. But uh, as I moved forward, as I progressed and, and uh, my uh, perception of, of the language and of the system got better, um, mm. it, it was good. It, it was very interesting. It was uh, absolutely not something that I expected. Um, Back then, we always said it is very hard to get accepted to law school. It's not as hard to, to go through law school. But uh, I think it was a hard work. And post factum, what, what, what is important uh, maybe for people who are watching this interview, younger people who decide to study law to understand is that uh, there's very few connections between the law school and the real law that we do in life. Um, and we'll talk about it later on, what I would suggest to do, but what I would suggest to do is literally to try the actual uh, law work, to go to a law office or any type of legal environment before you make your final decision about the law school. That is great advice. Um, I'm hoping to turn it over into some more career-focused questions. 
And the first one I'd like to ask is how you would describe your area of law and what you do. So right now, in most of the situations, I actually describe my area of law as not practicing law. Uh, I'm, I'm much more interested in, in the business development, which is connected to my uh, practice. Um, but if we uh, concentrate the, the, the view on the legal system, what I do is mostly corporate uh, business law. I touch on, on employment law uh, with essentially the goal of providing um, a comprehensive set of, of uh, professional consulting and support to my clients at their initial stages of business development. So it's small, medium businesses that grow, uh, have limited resources to access uh, expensive downtown lawyers, but they need already help either with corporate uh, structures uh, different situations of purchase of shares, sale of shares, um, business areas of concern, such as agreements, NDAs, uh, basic business documents that they need to, to develop and protect their business from the legal perspective, and the employment. So how do you manage hiring people? Uh, how do you protect yourself from the contractor's claims? Um, I, I try to cover all these subjects to provide them one-stop solution at my uh, firm. Now, this may not be a quick and easy one again, but uh, how would you describe your journey from university to where you are now in your position? Well, my, my journey is, is definitely a crazy one because um, um, graduating from, from the university, I was expected to start my military service, which, is, uh, which was extremely long. And uh, there were three years of mandatory service, compulsory, plus another three years of contract service that I was already signed um, in order to allow me to study law before um, military service. So um, it's not that I really have chosen to, to, to serve in, in the army, but um, I loved what I've done there. And there it was uh, strictly a legal process and representation of soldiers uh, in different criminal administrative proceedings. Uh, I actually worked against the, the army. Being the officer in the army, I represented the soldiers that were, I was a defender. So uh, against the prosecutors and against the, the army in, in the logic of the things. Um, then I actually continued my immigration path and they came to Canada, which required me to start all over again. Uh, the only lucky part was that I didn't have to take my law school again. Uh, I only had to take about 10 exams in order to be uh, eligible to approach the bar. Um, during that period of time, as well as afterwards, I continued to, uh, to quote unquote practice law. So I worked in different legal positions as an employee, which allowed me to, to perform legal services without being licensed. So essentially I never stopped uh, being a lawyer, but uh, until approximately two and a half, three years ago, uh, I mostly worked as a as an employee uh, lawyer inside uh, mid and large scale companies. Um, and after I've 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 decided to to start my personal uh, company, which is CBS Canadian Business and Enterprise Services, um, that was a complete turn uh, of events uh, in my career when I moved to to, to become self employed. Uh, start a corporation and develop it to where we are, are, we are now, uh, serving small, medium businesses with uh, anything they require from legal, accounting, professional support to, to allow them develop and grow. Now, as you mentioned, uh, you are a co-founder of Canadian Business and Enterprise Services. Um, can you expand a little bit more on what inspired you to start that? Yeah, so... Um, Having this unique experience of, from one side, being already a lawyer with very uh, in-depth knowledge of, of legal system in general, but on the other side, being a newcomer to Canada and uh, learning the system anew, uh, I've realized how complicated, cumbersome, and inaccessible the system is for, for most of the people from one side. And from the other side, I've realized a very... Um, unique set of circumstances in the Canadian, specifically Canadian business legal environment, where people have from one side a very um, ease of access 
to, to start their businesses, to develop their businesses. You, you essentially don't have to comply with almost anything. Uh, anyone can go online, register a corporation, do it wrong, but still it will be a registered corporation. Uh, they, they grow their businesses and I have many clients with dozens of years of experience with employees being employed for, for years without clients really understanding what are their uh, mandatory compliance requirements, legal requirements that they have to comply with. And at that point, I understood that uh, CBS uh, should be uh, something that will provide this um, guiding uh, support for, for, for beginning and medium-sized businesses uh, to help them navigate the, the legal environment, to even start understanding what they have to do in order to comply with the law, in order to avoid future problems. And those problems, this is an essentially a Russian relay. Uh, they, they will happen, and most probably the question is just when. How, how many times do I have to press uh, the button in order to, for this to happen? And many business owners just don't realize the extent of these legal uh, requirements. So that was the initial idea of CBS. And then we, uh, as we moved forward and we worked with uh, clients, we assisted them, we realized that uh, most of, of those people who start businesses, younger entrepreneurs, um, they, they look for a one person or at least one point of contact to whom they can come with most of their um, legal accounting tax related questions. And that's how we, uh, position right now the CBS, a company that uh, offers a combination of services that essentially is capable of taking all the headache of internal administrative management from the entrepreneurs and allowing them to concentrate on the business development. And I love the vision for that corporation, doing my own research on it, learning that it was just something that I feel is definitely needed in our environment. Um, yeah. For the rest of these career questions, I'm going to pass them over to my colleague, Sohini. Thank you, Nolan. I should apologize for the sound. Um, they're doing construction on my balcony, so please bear with me. Um, the first question I would like to ask is, can you please elaborate on the difference between a consultant, compliance officer, and a legal, uh, and legal counsel? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll try to. So, um, compliance is something that... Uh, larger corporations have but uh, the again the unique situation in Canada is that almost every business uh, must uh, comply with certain mandatory requirements uh, some of them are legal some of them administrative um, from almost the first steps and 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 for sure after you cross five employees to ten employees you are almost fully covered by, by at least six different laws that require you to comply documentary um, and, and most businesses, my, my personal opinion is about 98% of the businesses, they literally do not have anything uh, what is required to have to comply. So compliance officer is, is the person who should have a basic legal understanding or background, maybe not a lawyer, uh, but would work with uh, regulations, with laws, understanding the environment where the business works and adjusting its operations and its administration to those requirements. Um, legal counsel, uh, that is the, the work that the lawyer should do. Legal counsel is someone who should work with, with their clients, uh, either as uh, in-house or, or outsource, and support them from the legal perspective. Now, in my opinion, most of the legal counsels, uh, at least in Canada where I work, they they fail in, in, in their position because most of them will work on a as demanded basis, which means if I came to you and I ask you a question, they will give you an answer. But would they come to you uh, showing you which question to ask in order to give the answer? Most of them would not. It's a very uh, passive approach. And, and the result of this passive approach, if you connect it to the previous question that I told you, because many people just don't understand the system, they don't know which questions to ask is that lawyers do not get asked proper questions so they never have a chance to give the proper answer. Um, legal counsel is someone who should understand their clients, uh, who should um, get acquainted with the client's business and then provide them with the support from the legal perspective the client needs. A consultant, 
my personal and again I, I i don't really force this position on anyone i don't like the name consultant uh, especially in my personal approach uh, because i do i uh, when clients come to me I, I do not consult them what they should be doing i help them to do what they have to do to comply legally or to to prepare properly for future development uh, of their businesses uh, corporate restructuring expansions consultants those, those are the people who will review your situation your circumstances and offer their knowledge but then let you to deal with it uh, i personally don't like this approach but that's in my opinion the difference between these three positions thanks for your answer um you have a youtube channel called business in canada what inspired you to start this channel yeah youtube channel is business in canada do it right um and that is technically the extension of cbs that is the channel that uh, that was built on a presumption and the idea of helping people to get easier access to to legal information understanding of of the system and being able to deal to a certain extent with the system on their own uh, so all my videos, uh, they're structured strictly around the legal and administrative topics. I do not provide any business development advice to, to anyone. Uh, but uh, what, what I try to do is to take the, the act, uh, then to, to look at the system and the systems approach. So I would go on the websites of the government agencies, such as Corporations Canada, let's say, and I would provide a very simplified presentation of what is required, what, what the rule is and how to work through that rule in a language that normal person can understand without paying hundreds of dollars to lawyers, uh, just, just for the sake of understanding what they're supposed to do. Um, and uh, so far, I think the, the channel proves itself. We have already more than 8,000 subscribers. Uh, and yeah, and um, Based on the response and feedback of, of our subscribers, uh, I see that people do use this information for their benefit and it helps them to, to navigate the system. Congratulations, that's a lot of subscribers. Um, so my next question is sort of related to current circumstances. Um, how has COVID shaped your work as a lawyer and the industry as a whole? Um, so, so it's a it's a very like uh, expansive question, right? Uh, COVID changed all our lives. Um, a, as a lawyer, uh, COVID, to be very honest, didn't change my life a lot. Uh, because of my initial approach, because of my uh, constant striving to 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 freedom of of business operations of movement, I'm I'm very mobile. I can work from from almost any any spot in the world. Uh, and I was preparing myself for this without thinking about COVID, but as a general for years already. So um, you can literally take me right now, remove me from all my phones, computers, burn them down. And two days later, I will be back on track working as if nothing happened. Uh, so COVID didn't affect me much. I, um, it, more, it affected more my clients and their ability to come to me and, and uh, retain my services some of them because they're dealing with other more, more urgent uh, issues others because they uh, just don't have sufficient funds as a result of COVID. now but uh, overall i think COVID taught us a very very good lesson about uh, the um, the requirement of us as a as a group as lawyers as society uh, stop working within uh, preset boundaries of profession and think how, how to make, make it more flexible, more, more ad adaptable. And, and that's, that's the best, actually, effect of COVID on us right now. Now I don't know. So, so since yeah. we're nearing the end of the pandemic, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be over. Do you have any predictions, uh, like due to COVID um, in the legal industry, that things would change or things would alter because of COVID? Look, I, I, I don't like to predict things. I'm not a good predictor. Uh, but from my personal perspective, if, if you already could understand from, from what I said previously, I'm not the greatest uh, fan of legal profession in its uh, performance, execution form in Canada. And, and I think that uh, 
may, many people fall uh, quote-unquote victims to, to increased fees as a result of, of uh, uh, their requirement to pay for lawyers and, and their uh, rent of, of unreasonably expensive uh, real estate in downtown Toronto. Um, and I hope that, that as a result of COVID, as a result of um, offices moving into remote work, uh, the two things will happen. First, we will see more um, decentralized law offices, smaller law offices popping up because it will be just easier to manage um, five to 10 uh, lawyers rather than 500 um, as, a, as a remote working individuals. And second, hopefully we'll see some reduction in the fees as a result of, of uh, reduction of the necessity to, to have these multi-million offices downtown. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Justin to wrap up this uh, interview when we put final questions. Um, I'd actually like to follow up on something you just said. So would you say that COVID would essentially, you know, with the reduction of fee potentially, um, help the access to justice problem? Uh, that would be very unrealistically to say, but, but I think it, yeah, I think it will... Uh, it has the opportunity, it creates the opportunity for us as a group to uh, make certain revision and amendments to what, what we do and how we do it, uh, which will essentially result in more people being able to access lawyers, uh, to access uh, legal services. Uh, how much will it change and make the, the system in whole as more accessible? I, I don't know. Hopefully, yes. Okay, um, and then I suppose on a much lighter note, uh, that, was, that was a very insightful answer and hopefully, you know, the industry is able to work towards what you've just said. Um, but if there was a job other than the law, what would it be and why? That you could do and what would it be and why? Yeah, so, um, you know, to be very honest, I, I would like to do, but not for a week, uh, for a couple of months, uh some kind of very light job like like i don't know waiter in a restaurant or or a lumberjack or a, s something that that is not that that removes the responsibility towards someone else okay and, and being a legal department manager in a large manufacturing company i always said that there are days that i really envy uh, those uh, welders at the manufacturing plant. And the reason for that is because at the end of the day, they disconnect their, their equipment, they, they verify that everything is in a good working order, they clean their workplace, and they switch their brain and they go home. They enjoy their lives, they enjoy their families, they enjoy their uh, time um, free, while I continue to constantly think about uh, that client and this client, that case and this case, the documents that they have to prepare, and this is never ending um, roller coaster. So, so I would like to, to, to try a job that, that doesn't require me being responsible for, for anyone else and whatever the job, even if I, if I have to go and work like nine hours physical hard work, I think, think emotionally it will be much more uh, releasing and, and, and easier than what we do. Which probably will bring us to your next question. Um, yeah, no, that, that's definitely a very different direction than the law. So, you know, it's nice to hear that. Um, but what is one piece of advice you'd give to every future lawyer? Um, except for the advice not to become a lawyer or... Um, so, essentially, there's not one piece. I, I, I would say two pieces of advice. And, and I would start from, um, from a basic explanation to those people who, who think about law and, and didn't yet start uh, their career as lawyers. You have to understand that law is, is one of the widest uh, fields of, of profession that exist. Um, and as an opposite from medical school, where at a certain point you have to learn specific area of medicine and you will be licensed to do specific area of medicine in law you get the license to be everything 
uh, essentially you can you can break the legal system into two major areas of of characters one is is the area of creation uh, in my opinion and that's the area of of what what we do corporate lawyers uh, lawyers uh, contract lawyers people who who are not engaged on a day-to-day -day basis in a conflict resolution. When you create documents, when you create agreements, when you create policies, uh, legislation, these areas of law, they're completely different from, from the conflict, uh, never-ending conflict resolution or, or war that, that other lawyers um, participate. In. Uh, and those lawyers would, would include uh, partial family lawyers that, that deal with divorces, uh, everything that is court related, um, personal injury lawyers in many cases end up uh, arguing their cases at the court, which again brings them to the position where you have to fight with someone, and of course criminal lawyers. So first of all, those who think about becoming lawyers should understand this difference, these two completely different areas of law, and that's by the way why lawyers are called barrister and, and solicitor, because up until about 100 years ago, there were two separate professions, specifically based on these two approaches. One, prepare the documents, the other one, go to the court and, and fight. Um, and the second, based on this advice would be, as I said already before, um, go and try. Like it, it's it's a good thing in Canada, which is opposite from many other countries, that you first have to finish a regular bachelor's at the university before you apply for the law school. Uh, take that time and go and volunteer or find a summer summer job position with a law firm, with uh, I don't know, prosecutor's office, wherever you can. Bring coffees to people, help sorting documents, but take it take a bit of a taste of what it means being a lawyer. Look how people work, because uh, in my experience, it looks very beautiful, interesting, and romantic from outside to be a lawyer. And for many, it appears to be uh, significantly not so when they become one. So this, I think, the, the, the main advice I would give to people. Definitely, and I suppose it was also beneficial that you said, you know, that um, you have to ask the right answer questions to get the right answers um, when you're yeah. dealing with lawyers. Right. So that was that was also something that I definitely, you know, resonates well with me. Um, but other than that, I think uh, we're we're done with the interview. Did you have any questions for us before we close? No, no. I just want to wish good luck to lawyers. Thank you so much. It was wonderful having you with us. Um, it was a lot of insightful information that you said um, and definitely a lot of good takeaways um, that I'm sure our community at large will also take away from. Um, I'd like to thank Sumini and Nolan uh, for helping me conduct this interview. Um, and thank you, Eugene, uh, for being with us. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you all too. Bye-bye.